Uh, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I uh, welcome Aoife Nivrian onto the stage. Hey. So, so, yeah. How's the last few years been? <laughs> I sat at home. In fact, I painted my whole apartment <laughs> listening to music that I would play again on stage at some point in the future. So it is it's great to be back and it's great to be here. And I want to say thank you so much to the Canada Ireland Foundation for asking me over. I've never been to Toronto before. It's my first time. I've, uh, thank you. <laughs> the Maple Leafs, if I cheer for them, am I right? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, I have family over here. I have three cousins that moved over. Uh, and it, it took William getting me a gig, an old neighbor to get me a gig for me to actually come over and see them on their, their new turf. So, um, no, honestly, it's a pleasure to be here. It's, an ama it's amazing to see such a great crowd. Um, and just... I, I really, really hope you enjoy the night. I'm going to start off and just slash into it a bit. So anyone that was at the lunch yesterday, I hope you don't remember what I played because you might be hearing some of those sets again. <laughs> I'll, I'll make some changes, but, you know, just pretend it's your first time. I'm going to start off with a march. I'm from Dublin. Anybody from Dublin? <laughs> So I'm from the north side of Dublin. Myself and William actually grew up on the same cul-de-sac. It's true, my mom taught every child on the street and every parent how to play music. So what happened was the men, so my dad is an Illin Piper, so he would take the men to learn music in our front room. But they always seemed to end up at the pub. <laughs> I don't know how it happened. So they'd obviously get into a great debate over the, the complex nature of the tin whistle and end up having to deliberate over a pint just to get their exercise in, just, you know, walk the 15 minutes, clear the head, spend the hour, come back again. It was a process. And funnily enough, the women, they also wanted to learn how to play the tin whistle, but um, it didn't really work as a corkscrew. So um, they would drink the wine first and then have their tin whistle lessons. By the way, William and I had a fantastic childhood, full of music. Our, my front room was full of every child on the road. But I live in an area called Fingal. So I'm going to start with a march called The Return to Fingal. It's where my grandfather grew up. And then I'm going to play a reel called The Duke of Leinster, which again is the province where I grew up. So I'm going to start from home. And I might bring, bring you on a bit of a trip around the country after that. But uh, we'll start in Dublin anyway. Thanks a million. <laughs>
to myself, what's that sound? Who's thumping upstairs? So uh, my socks are clean, but um, it was actually getting on my nerves. <laughs> so I'm afraid the, the shoes, as, as lovely as they are, are just going to have to stay off for the next while. That's a, that's a bit better. I was actually thinking it was something else. I kept uh, kind of getting a bit panicked. Thank you very much. Um, so I'm going to continue on. It's, it's not a slow air, so to speak, but I've turned it into a slow air. It's a piece that Sean O'Rear wrote. Sean O'Rear was one of Ireland's greatest composers. He passed away at the age of 40. And recently, I was asked to play at a, an anniversary concert, the 50th anniversary of his death. And he is famous for his arrangements of traditional Irish melodies. Um, Misha Era, his suite, would be probably the most widely known. But actually, there was a, a piece of music he wrote, Trón na Buile, and the first piece from that suite of music that he wrote is what I'm going to play now. And I, I got permission from the family to turn it into an air. Basically, I kind of intertwined uh, some of his classical music um, with his traditional music. Now, I'm not going to do that set tonight because it takes about 20 minutes, but um, I'm going to put it with this um, a hornpipe called The Drunken Sailor, which I would have gotten from the playing of the Dublin fiddle player Tommy Potts. And I may or may not go into a reel that was written by Sean O'Rear, the son, Padder. I was out with Padder in his house um, last summer. Um, I was recording a television program, and I had to talk to him about climate change, he brought me beekeeping, and then we had to look for orchids along the path in Coulé, uh, where he lives, kind of in the Gwaeltocht region down in Schlievluchre. And uh, he turned around to me and he said, do you know why we're looking for butterflies? And I said, absolutely not. Ah, oh, because I had a dream, and in my dream, I wrote you a tune called Aoife's Butterfly. And I'll, I'll play it for you now. It'll come back to me, but only when we find the butterfly. <laughs> and he did. He wrote me a tune, and it's, it's beautiful. If, if, it, if it doesn't feel right in the set, I'll play it for you afterwards anyway, because it is a fabulous tune. But it's, it's an amazing thing to see the legacy that Sean O'Rear that left with Cor Coulet, a, a male choir. There's also a female choir. Um, and the mass music that he wrote, but um, just what he gave back to the Irish people is, is really phenomenal. So Pather is continuing that legacy and in, in my humble opinion is one of the best Irish traditional music composers of the century. Now he more so traditional music than any classical music, but um, yeah, he's an incredible, incredible man, incredible family. So this is the slow air that I get away with. Just, uh, I hope you enjoy it.
Thanks, William. So yeah, obviously I didn't go into the route. It didn't really fit in at the end. I'll we'll play a few now. So this is Padre Orida's butterfly reel. It's um, just one of these lovely things. When you think about Irish traditional music, we always think it's a thing of the past, but it's not. It's very much alive and kicking. And I think it's an amazing thing to play a tune that could be 100 years old or it could have been written yesterday. And I think what is happening over here with the Canada Ireland Foundation really hits home in that sense, like for myself, I'm the ripe old age of 31, don't judge me. And <laughs> I've now lived outside of Ireland more than I've lived in Ireland. I left home when I was 15. I went to study classical violin in France. I lived in my teacher's basement and it was as scary as it sounds because he could hear me practicing. So I'd be practicing downstairs in my little basement room and next thing I'd hear, what are you doing? You call that practice? And he'd be at the door or beckoning me to come up so he could give out to me again and send me back to practice again. Um, but I learned great discipline there, I'll tell you that much. It's nothing more terrifying than being listened to when you're practicing. But um, yeah, it's, it's a funny thing to think that um, what I would consider history or something that I read in a history book in school is actually now what I do. When I think of people leaving Ireland and finding a new life and having, you know, generations of Irish history and ancestry, I'm now married to an English man <laughs> who thinks he's Irish. <laughs> Second name Flanagan. We'll give it to him. It's in there somewhere. But, um, you know, it, it struck me last year. I was playing at the Edinburgh Festival and um, it was a really beautiful project two Scots musicians, two Irish musicians. We did an amazing concert in a courtyard and there were three ladies who lived in this building which was a tenement slum called Little Ireland back in the day. So these three ladies, all called Margaret, were all brought up in this tenement building as Irish girls. Like they did Irish dancing, they'd be shipped back home to Ireland every summer. And I was sitting there talking to them and you know, one of them was a foreign diplomat. She was out in the Arab Emirates, like way before, uh, you know, anybody I knew, were even, like, you know, I'm thinking of my grandparents' ages, like there's, they would never even considered going that far away from home. She traveled the world. She came back to Edinburgh. The other two had similar stories. They'd worked in London and New York, big cities, but they were Irish and that's how they felt. And I, I had to do it just a small documentary about them and you know what it meant as an Irish person to be there and I, I burst into tears in the documentary because it hit me that I'm the next Margaret that's that I'm the next generation of Irish people who have left with you know a song in their heart a tune in their head and whatever they have in their suitcase and whether or not we get home who knows you know and it just really kind of brings home what the Canada Ireland Foundation is doing over here because it's so welcoming and it's just an incredible achievement for all the Irish people in the world, that diaspora, that we always have that home to come home to. So anyway, that's a long spiel into a very short tune. But um, <laughs> the <laughs> so I'll just play it, it's just a little ditty almost, but um, this is Aoife's butterfly, so if I've nothing left in my pockets leaving Ireland, I've got this at least.
So now for something completely different. So I'm trained as a classical violinist, but I've always played trad music. And it's like being bilingual. I was brought up speaking English outside the front door, speaking Irish inside the house, and speaking Irish in school. And it's kind of hard to, I don't know, find a, a place of cross-contamination, <laughs> I suppose. And it was the same with um, traditional music and classical music for the longest of times. And it felt like you couldn't speak both languages at the same time, until I found a fiddle player from Dublin. Um, unfortunately, not from the north side from just over the Liffey on the south side, in the Liberties, a place where a lot of great musicians come from. Tony McMahon lived there, Tommy Potts, my favorite fiddle player, and who I'm going to talk about now, and Sean Potts, has anyone heard of the Chieftains? Kjol Three Coolin? Yeah. So Sean Potts, the whistle player, who unfortunately passed away a while ago, he also lived in the Liberties, so like just an amazing hub of music. But Tommy Potts was one of these incredible musicians that was like, um, I don't know, he was like the jazz musician of Irish traditional music. And I'll just demonstrate briefly. Um, there's a reel called My Love is in America, which Tom Power has requested for later, so you're going to hear that too. But um, I'm just going to play the two different versions. You'll see what I mean. The first one is the, the normal, normal version. The second one is what Potts does. Pots aficionado, like there's a there's a cult of us around the world, and we are completely devoted to these recordings of of Tommy Potts. But um, one of my favorite tunes that he plays is Gareth Barry's, which is a tune that my grandfather would have played on the box. And he's kind of he was a huge musical influence on me and my family. And um, I should give a tiny bit of family background. My dad, four brothers, all musicians. Music came from my granddad. In Dad's family, we have two Ellen Pipers, two fiddle players, and an incredible whistle player, my Uncle Dennis, who actually had muscular dystrophy and was in a wheelchair and passed away at the age of 30. Now, he was told he was going to die when he was 15. By the age of 19, he recorded his solo whistle album, which is still regarded as one of the, one of the best tin whistle albums ever recorded. He had already won about seven or eight All-Ireland Whistle Championships at that point. Like, he was beating the competition left, right, and center. Um, and he was voted as the Ireland's Person of the Year Award. And then he became the head of human resources at the Department of Labour. <laughs> so <laughs> he is the reason that we have wheelchair access for every government building in Dublin in the 80s. <laughs> Pretty cool. Unfortunately, I never got to meet him. He died six months before I was born. But due to his music and the fact that we grew up having radio interviews with him, television interviews, concerts that we could watch. I always feel like I, I knew him and that he's you know, a huge part of our lives. My mom's side, on the other hand, there's eight siblings, which is a very small family for Ireland. Um, seven girls and one boy. <laughs> he's fine, he's fine. <laughs> um, my mom grew up in Sligo in a place called Ballymote. And she got her music from a man called Willie Coleman, who was a fiddle player who lived down the road. So all of her siblings grew up dancing and playing music predominantly. So as you can imagine, once we all came along, the three of us, my brother, sister, and I would very little say <laughs> in whether or not we were going to play music. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's, it's an incredible thing to have. And it's another language we speak together as a family, and we're, we're blessed to have it. We really, really are. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to play a set of jigs now um, that kind of, it's where I get to cross-contaminate. So um, I studied in Leipzig, the, the place where 
Johann Sebastian Bach lived and composed for many years. And obviously I'm, I'm a dub, pure Northside dub. And when I was listening to Tommy Potts recordings, I could hear Bach's music in them and it, I couldn't shake it. So a fiddle player called Martin Hayes approached me and said, Potts, Bach, what do you got? <laughs> I can't uh, cry for help, <laughs> you know, I've no, no idea. Um, and I put together a project called Partitas and Pots. And it was where I was taking the dance movements from Bach's music and combining them with Tommy Potts's music. Um, and the next two sets are dedicated to that because it's the truest music I have that kind of shows who I am as a person and a musician, I suppose, that you can speak two languages fluently. And um, I suppose for me, the biggest joy in doing this is that it breaks down any borders or boundaries between musicians and um, people get to hear it in a different way. So the next set, I'm actually gonna have to stand for the next few sets, but um, it's Gareth Barry's jig. It's another few jigs afterwards, but ugh, they're, they're not as important. You might hear some you might hear some Bach in the middle as well. I should have put my hair in a ponytail. <laughs> Thank you. 
kind of a similarity, you know, just uh, in the thought process. We're going to stay with Bach and Potts. I'm going to do a request for Tom Power. You might recognize this if you listen to Bach at all. It's the Saraband from the second partita in D minor. Tommy Potts loves the key of D minor, and so do I, because my dad's an Illin Piper and he can't play in that key. And <laughs> so it's um, a set, fro again, from the Partitas to Potts project with um, the real My Love is in America, um, which is, a, as I said, was a very common tune, but one of the most interesting fragments from Potts in this tune is that he was listening to <laughs> a pop song in the 80s that had a mambo in it. Mambo Italiana, <laughs> right? So you'll hear this, like... <laughs> from the mambo, and it comes in again, and again, and again. Um, so I don't know what was happening in Dublin in the 80s between the in the traditional music community, but we, I don't think we give them enough credit. But this is another, um, let's call it, bit of a crossover one, and I really hope you enjoy it. Thank you. 
so much. I'm going to stop that now. I'm going to go back to some more folk music, if that's okay. So um, all of my violin teachers were Romanian, and they have the most incredible folklore. But one of my violin teachers, Mariana Sirbu, um, her violin teacher, you know, it's a family tree when it comes to music. Her violin teacher studied with the infamous George Enescu, who happened to be in Paris at the same time as Sean O'Riada. So Sean O'Riada was actually in Paris for the last six months of Inescu's life. When I went to school in France, I went to the same school as Messiaen, who Sean O'Riada studied with in Paris. <laughs> so just when we think that, you know, the world couldn't get any smaller, it does, and it continues to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And particularly during COVID, when it was so difficult to think of what we're doing right now today that it would ever be possible again. I got very interested in how many musical paths had crossed in the past and how much relevance folk music and the music of that person's country had on them as a person, as a composer, as a musician. And the two people that kept popping up were Inescu and Sean O'Riada. And they just kept coming back and back and back. And I felt a very personal connection to both of them, the way I feel a personal connection to Bach. So again, this is, I promise, the last classical trad crossover set of the evening, and then we're straight back to the, the pure drop. But um, it's an important one for me. It's the first movement of the Inescu solo violin sonata, which is so folkloric. It's incredible. And it's not well known at all. In fact, it took me a long time to find it. And then I'm going to play a tune called The Maids of Mitchellstown. As I was saying yesterday, you'd probably know Mitchellstown for its cheese. That's exactly what I know for, too. Um, but it is, I think, in Cork? Tipperary? Cork? 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 Yeah. I, oh, I made a great mistake there recently, last year. And I'm not going to repeat it today, but like I've learned my lesson. Give no facts, because I'm probably wrong. Um, and any of the names of tunes, I may or may not have made them up on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be giving that one away anytime soon. But um, uh, should I maybe take the microphone off for this one? It gets kind of high and loud. Is it, a bit, is it a bit boomy for the classical stuff? Grant, I'll leave it on. So, um, so this is Inescu, first movement, going into the Maids of Mitchellstown. And um, yeah, as I said, then we'll be straight back on the dirt road out of Fingal into Dublin city centre. <laughs>
so much. I spoke a little bit about my uncle Dennis earlier on, the whistle player, and I'm going to play two tunes that I learned from him, two hornpipes. The first is called Thome and Bridge, and the second is called On Lundov, which means the blackbird. Now, we have a set dance at home called the blackbird. This is the hornpipe, which is a different tune, which a lot of people don't know. But um, to play with me, I'm going to ask Tom Power to come up, and I met Tom 10 years ago. In Montreal, we were playing at the same festival, and uh, I had no idea he was uh, kind of well known. <laughs> so last year, when we were asked to put this video together of the two of us playing for an online event for uh, the Canada Arden Foundation, I said to William, yeah, I have a friend. Uh, he's from Newfoundland. He'll play with me. His name is uh, Tom Power. And William goes, what, like Tom Power from the radio? And I was like, no, Tom Power from Newfoundland. Do you not, do you not hear what I said? <laughs> Little did I know. So please give a warm hand to Mr. Tom Power from the radio. <laughs> Hi, Eva. Hey, Tom. How don't are you? Don't interview me. <laughs> <laughs> so why, why did you want to play the fiddle like that? All right. Um, it's lovely to be here. Thanks a lot for coming out. Isn't Ethan amazing? <laughs> well, it's time to put a stop to all that, I'll tell you that much.
We're going to finish the first half of the evening with um, the set of tunes that started this whole project for Canada Arden last year, except this time we actually get to play it in the same room. Last year we, last year we did this project for this foundation, which is incredible, by the way, and they asked if Eva and I would play together, and I recorded my part in my studio at the CBC. Do not tell the CBC that I did that. Um, it's on YouTube. John. It's on YouTube. Well... <laughs> I hope both of you watch it and don't rat me out. Um, Oops. Um, I recorded my part at the, at the CBC, and Eva recorded hers uh, in, at, my living room. in your living room, and we it, yeah. got someone to cobble them together, so it made it seem like we were actually playing together, but we played it separately. And this will be the first time, after all of that, that we've ever actually played it together in real life, because Eva and I have been really enjoying playing music together. Thank you. <laughs> but... Um, but we actually haven't been, and we've been talking, and we've been playing music together, and we did a full set together last year, but this is the first time we've been in the same room playing music together in 10 years. So it is uh, very cool for me to be here, and, and these are the tunes that kind of got it all started for us. We haven't changed a bit. <laughs> Honestly, if we could show you pictures. I mean, I put on about COVID-19, but that's about it. That's about <laughs> it. Still got it. <clears throat> So these are a set of clan marches that I learned from my, my dad. And actually, you'll probably agree with me, Tom. It's kind of cool, like in the traditional music scene. Like your heroes are your parents, your family, your grandparents. It, you know, the best musician you know could be a dentist. They could be a teacher. They could be a farmer. They could be the man pulling the pints. And it's, it's just, it's very cool. So I have to say, like, my dad is one of my heroes. And he's, you know, one of the best musical influences on my life and possibly kind of why we got to know each other as well, because I was over playing with him. Yeah, um, I think your dad is one of my heroes, too, you know? So, like, it's, yeah. uh, it's nice to play some music. So just, again, to kind of, yeah, give a bit of a tip to the cap to the Irish diaspora. Like, it's, um, it's an amazing music to bring with you around the world. But anyway, the first clan march is called Bumper Squire Jones. The second one is called I Have No Idea. And the third one is called I Will Call My Dad in 10 Seconds like Nap. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. See you in 15 or 20. Thank you. Those are two jigs. The first one's called Kitty Lie Over, Close to the Wall. That's the important part of the name. Um, and the second one is called The Munster Buttermilk. And um, yeah, we, lear we both learned those uh, from my dad. We're going to go on now and play two tunes. The first one is a version of a tune that you probably all know, The Dawning of the Day. The, yeah. So this is a special version of this tune that was collected by the Protestant minister in Skibbereen, um, Canon James Goodman, who collected music around that part of Ireland during the 1850s, um, so during the time of the famine. And if he hadn't collected the music, it probably would have gotten lost forever, to be honest. He was an Irish speaker. He played the pipes, the flute, he was a singer, 
And he ended up being a lecturer of Irish in Trinity College, and it's there that the manuscripts were found, hidden in the library long after he died. And Dr. Hugh Shields and his wife Lisa took on the like momentous task of um, transcribing them and making a book, Tunes of the Munster Pipers, of which there are now two volumes. And the songs were recently found in a skip in England where a house was being, you know, some, the owner had passed away. Little did we know she was one of Goodman's ancestors. And the songs were about to be sent away and destroyed, only that somebody saw them in the skip and pulled them out. So there is a book of songs on the way. Earl O'Leonard and Steve Cooney have been working on them. But I had the great pleasure of working on these manuscripts with my dad, um, Mick O'Brien, and Emer Mayock, a flautist from May Mayo. And we were the first people to record this music, probably since, well, ever, I suppose. I didn't have that much recording equipment in the 1850s, but to, to bring the if music If they did, back. it wasn't very good. No, no, no. no. It was no. Whack, whack cylinders, but poor, that was like 1899. MP3s and all that. How terrible. You, know. you mean CDs? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so it was it was an amazing project, and um, the music is, is, is incredible. And we actually find um, certain versions of the tunes all over the world now where they, you know, the music traveled with people at the time of the famine and was not played in Ireland anymore. And actually, there was a, a, a study done on the songs of Newfoundland. And a lot of the songs that we don't have in Ireland anymore, but we know of, are sung in Newfoundland, where the people took them over with them. So it's, um, yeah, yet another great connection to our past. So this is Fáin Ig Yaman Lé, so the dawning of the day, and Cáilich an Argit, which is the hag with the money, or the witch with the money, of which there are numerous versions. So I dedicate this to my mom. No, I'm joking. <laughs>
Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, definitely thank you, one of you, for answering that. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm glad you all elected a representative before the show. If he asks how we are, you answer, all right? How's everybody doing? I got this. All right, good, 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 good. Um, I was happy Ethan mentioned uh, Newfoundland there because um, that's where I'm from. Um, thank you very much. I had very little to do with it, but I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, I'm from St. John's, Newfoundland, uh, and we'll get St. John's, Newfoundland, and Labrador. I moved up here. I've been in Toronto for 10 years. And does anyone else have that weird experience where it feels like, because who's been here, like who's not from Toronto here tonight, right? <laughs> All right, good, right. And who of ye have been here longer than 10 years? Right, so almost all of you, right. So is it just me or does it feel like it goes by in like six months? You know what I mean? Like, I feel like God, I got here two weeks ago, and I barely understand north and south and east and west, and I have no idea what a streetcar is. And I've been here 10 years. But the lovely thing about Toronto for me is that no matter where you're from, you can kind of find a community here. And Newfoundland musicians have found a community not just with other Newfoundland musicians, but as being part of the, of the larger sort of I Irish music community here. And I've been so fortunate for the past, um, I guess, eight or nine of those years that I've been here to be uh, holding up a session on Sundays at Dora Keogh's on uh, the Danforth, which is now known as Noonan's because it got bought by a Newfoundlander. <laughs> so, <laughs> first Noonan's, then come from away, we're taking over the world. And uh, I'm glad one of you is very happy about that. But the point is, that's Danny Williams over there going, I'm going to take the flag down. Anyway, point being is that um, it's been really lovely to sing and, and play some Newfoundland music, and that's what I'm going to do, and that's what I've been stalling to do right now. So this is, I don't get to sing very often, and you'll see why. <laughs> this is a song from the singing of a great fellow named Gerald Campbell from Branch in Newfoundland. And here's the thing, I couldn't find this song anywhere. One time I was at the Newfoundland and Labrador Folk Festival, and you know what it's like, if you're Irish and, or you're from Newfoundland, you kind of know what this is like. There were 3,500 people in the audience in the middle of a field, and I watched this man, who at the time was 83 years old, get on stage after a rock band had played, so everyone's ears were ringing. And he walked up by himself in front of the microphone and sang this song by himself, and the entire field grew so silent. It was absolutely stunning, and I'll never forget it. And I went looking for the song afterwards, and I couldn't find it anywhere. I checked the, the Folklore Archives and Memorial. I checked you know, with people I knew who had archives of the song. Couldn't find it anywhere. Guess where I found it? In the Irish Traditional Music Archive. Because someone had gone over. That is the only time that it's ever been wooed for. And someone came <laughs> over. Someone came over uh, and, and got these songs because they sounded like Irish songs, or they were Irish songs, as Aoife mentioned, and they were... They were brought over our way and we kind of held on to them. So I'm going to sing one of those songs now and the song I got from the Irish Traditional Music Archive. Interesting thing at the end, if you are from Ireland, they're still trying to figure out where one of the communities he mentions at the end is. And no one can seem to find it on the map. So if you have any ideas, come find me afterwards and we'll nerd out together. <laughs> this is an old song from Gerald Campbell from Branch. It's a great honor to sing his songs even though now he's passed on. It's called The Girl Who Slighted Me. I'll see if I remember it. And I'll go down to yonder valley and see my heart's delight. And I'll sit and sing with you, Mary, from morning until night. And I'll buy my love a bottle and I'll place it in her hand. Fill and drink with you, Mary, while courting is to stand. Fill and drink, dear Mary, let the bottle remain with me. Ten guineas for a wager, it's Mary will never be. I was coming from church last Sunday when my love, she passed me by. And I knew her mind was altered by the rolling of her eye. I knew her mind was altered by a lad of high degree. Oh, Mary, my love, Mary, your looks have wounded me. 
Oh, Johnny, don't you remember when first you slighted me? You thought then for to slight me as you did with two or three. You thought then for to slight me and you slowly passed me by. Johnny, my love, Johnny, your love I must deny. If ever you meet with a pretty girl with a dark and rolling eye, hold her in your arms, don't tell her the reason why. Hold her in your arms till you cause her heart to yield. Like many's the gallant soldier boy has done upon the field. Oh, fare thee well to Santy Field, and fare thee well, Dunmore. Fare thee well, old Ireland, well, I see you no more. America lies far away, it's a land I soon shall see. My curse, my curse, and ten times worse on the girl who slighted me. <laughs> Gerald Campbell. <laughs> Santifield. Santifield is the moment. And he, and he says it. He says Santifield. So if any of, you, any of you crowd have any ideas at the end, write it down on a $5 bill. I just want to say the Irish National Music Archives is actually a very exciting place. I just want to clear the air there. Um, mm, I just want to say that the Irish well, National Archives. Just saying, you don't even know where Santee Field is. So. <laughs> That's the wor weirdest diss I've ever gotten in my entire life. I could probably find out where it is in the archives. <laughs> want to do it? Yeah. Well, the Rolling Leaf. No, 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 that's the end. Oh, yeah. The Harry Chester? Yeah. Chester. Harry Chester. Okay. Um, this is actually a tune I got in the Irish traditional music archives. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the board there, so I'm taking his comments very personally right yeah, now. Yeah, is, is board spelled B-O-R-E-D? <laughs> As you can see, he's from Newfoundland. <laughs> Newfoundland, I should say. <laughs> Love the rap battle that's happening between us. <laughs> Things have taken a drastic turn. What he doesn't know is I'm about to play these tunes in F minor. <laughs> Where's your capo, Tom? I didn't pay extra for F minor. This doesn't come. <laughs> anyway, no, we're going to play a few tunes. Um, I don't know the name of the first one. I do know the name of the second one. It's called The Hairy Chested Frog. I'm not allowed to tell that story, but if you do want to know it, find me after the gig. And I'll play another tune after that, which, again, I'll ask Dad what it's called later. <laughs> <laughs> Is your dad the Irish Traditional Music Archive? <laughs> He's my own personal archive. <laughs> Thank you. 
some polkas. And the first one we're going to do is, um, the, well, the first tune we're going to play is not a polka at all. It's, it's what we, in Newfoundland we call a single, which is when um, kind of polkas came over from Ireland and they found their way to, to Newfoundland and we sort of played them at an unbelievable pace without any ornamentation or any foo for First time I've said that word out loud. Uh, you know, it didn't feel great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, uh, over over time, a lot of the tunes that um, a lot of folks have come over from Ireland and played, we played Newfoundland tunes for them in my band, the Dardanelles, and and they found themselves kind of scratching their heads, saying that sounds like an Irish tune, that sounds like an Irish tune that has been put away in the closet and has led, has seven up spilled on it or something like that. <laughs> and um, this this first tune is one of those tunes, uh, and it ended up in the reason Ethan knows it and we thought it would be fun to play, is because it's part uh, that the folks who did Come From Away, the, the musical Come From Away, um, you know, that's a lovely show. Have you guys seen that show? It's incredible. It's incredible. And you know what? It's a mortal sin that it's not in Toronto anymore, I think. Yes. You know? Yeah, I think so too, and they should bring it back. Let's yeah. march down there right now. Anyway, point being, <laughs> point being stay, stay in your seats. So point being, um, they, they got these, the, the thing I love about Come From Away is that they had a lot of options to, to make up their own music, and that's the most traditional music thing I've ever said in my entire life, to describe original music as made up music. <laughs> they had a lot of options to make up their own songs. Um, but they decided to draw upon Newfoundland traditional music, including this first tune, which is a single. And then Aoife had a really beautiful idea of combining it with, sort of to, to speak to my identity and Aoife's identity, and also where our thoughts and hearts are right now. Um, we thought we'd, we'd first play a Newfoundland tune. The third tune we'll play is an Irish polka. And we thought in the second tune we'd play a Ukrainian polka. I do have to clarify, though, that a lot of Ukrainian polkas are actually also Polish polkas. <laughs> so there's a bit of the Newfoundland Irish thing going on. They're very similar but different. and. For any Ukrainian people in the audience or people with Ukrainian ancestry, I can only play this with an Irish accent. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's definitely that. It's, you know, come from away. I, I, I'm very lucky to get to play it in London. I've actually never seen the show from out front, but I hear it's super. When I saw Shoppers, <laughs> I nearly lost my mind. I didn't realize it was a real thing. Um, <laughs> and it's like in the first scene in the show, I was like, oh my God, there it is. <laughs> I was like taking pictures of Shoppers <laughs> this morning. <laughs> People were just looking at me. I was like, don't mind me. Um, yes, <laughs> that was an experience. <laughs> Security were nice. But then... Um, <laughs> But just, you know, that show is all about what people do for each other when the going gets tough, and it, it has never been tougher for the people of Ukraine. So it's, um, I didn't want to play a slow tune. I didn't want to play a sad tune. I wanted to play a tune for peace rather than anything else. So we're going to dedicate this for especially our friends, our friends in Russia, our friends in Ukraine, and just, you know, being Irish, I think peace with your neighbors is one of the greatest things you can have. And obviously Ireland had to fight for that too. And it's just... Yeah, I just, I really hope that that's what they have in the future. So um, this is for Ukraine. <laughs> Thank you. 
right, well, um, we, don't, we only have a little bit of time left. Um, thanks a lot for coming out, by the way. Um, uh, and thanks to, thanks to Aoife for asking me to get up here. This has been really fun and, and my first time playing music like this in a few years. Um, uh, we're, we're not quite done yet, but I do want to let you know that every single Sunday, Irish traditional music is played with vim and vigor uh, on Sundays at 4.30 at Noonan's Pub with me and my friend Patrick Orso uh, playing tunes every Sunday and every Tuesday at... Every Tuesday at 8 o'clock, our, our good friend Dan McDonald over there, incredible fiddle player himself, Brian Tahani um, and Ross, they all, the North Atlantic Drift, they have a session there every Tuesday night. Um, head out and support Irish traditional music in Toronto, especially now that we're able to do it again. Um, so get out there and do it. Uh, I'll sing a song before we go, and then Eva will play some more tunes, and then we'll go over and argue with the pub. Um, I thought I'd sing a song, a pretty well-known Newfoundland song, um, but again, one that's melody comes from Irish music. It's a true story from a fellow named Mark Walker, who was from um, Bonavista Bay in Newfoundland. Any Newfoundlanders here, actually? Yeah. Oh, wow. One, and then two, and three, and four, and five. I hope someone I hope someone turned out the lights back home. Yeah, I was going to say, it's like their whole town. Uh, the whole, yeah, this is that's half Everyone's the population here. of some of the towns are here tonight. Um, this is a song from Bonavista Bay, and this is a true story that Mark Walker wrote um, after he was trying to take wood across um, the pond. He was trying to take the, the wood back up to his cabin, and because the pond had frozen over, he was able to go across the pond, and it was a little bit, able to be a little bit faster. And, um, but you know how it gets around this time of year when the spring starts to come in, you never really know how those ponds are gonna work and um, I guess it started to buckle uh, underneath and there's a, there's a big argument back home as to whether the horse in this story is dead or alive. I'm a big believer that the horse is alive but we'll have to ask uh, Schrodinger, about, Schrodinger about that. Um, that's, that's the dorkiest joke I've ever made in my life. But the, but the point of it being, um, the point of it being is that I don't think the song is about whether the horse is uh, dead or alive. The song is about how the neighbors showed up and helped out. And if that's not what we've been doing over the past two years, I don't know what is. This is a song from Mark Walker. It's called Tickle Cove Pond. When we get to the chorus at the end, if you know it, please sing along. Because <clears throat> I won't be able to. <laughs> In cutting and hauling and frosting and snow, we're up against troubles that few people know. And it's only by courage and patience and grit and eating plain food will we keep ourselves fit. The hard and the easy we take as they come. And when ponds freeze over, we shorten our run. To hurry my haulin' with spring coming on, I ne'er lost me a mare out on Tickle Cove Pond. I knew that the ice, it grew weaker each day, but I still kept my mare and kept hauling away. One evening in April, bound home with a load, my mare showed some halting against the ice road. She knew more than I did as matters turned out. It would be lucky for me had I joined her in doubt. She turned all around me with tears in her eyes, as if she was saying, you're risking our lives. All of this I ignored with a whip handle blow, for man is too stupid, dumb creature to know. And the very next moment the pond gave a sigh, and up to our necks went poor Kitty and I. And if I had taken wise Kitty's advice, I ne'er would have taken that shortcut on the ice. Poor creature, she's dead, poor creature, she's gone, and I'll ne'er get my wood off of Tickle Cove Pond. I raised an alarm you could hear for a mile, and the neighbors showed up in a very short while. You can always depend on the old furds and whites to render assistance in all your bad plights. To help a kind neighbor is part of their lives, the same can be said for their children and wives. With the bowline fastened against the mare's breast, William White for a shanty song made a request. There was no time for thinking, no time for delay. 
Straight from my heart came this song right away. Lay ho, William Mulford, lay ho, William White. Lay ho, of the cordage and pull all your might. Lay ho, of the bowline and pull all you can. And give us a lift with poor kid on the pond. Lay ho, William Mulford, lay ho, William White. Lay ho, of the cordage and pull all your might. Lay hold of the bowline and pull all you can and give us a lift with poor kid on the pond. Lay ho, William Mulford, lay ho, William White. Lay hold of the cordage and pull all your might. Lay ho of the bowline and pull all you can. And with that, we pulled Kit out of Tickle Cove Pond. <laughs> I think she's alive too because of the first verse. I ne'er lost me a mare out on Tickle Cove Pond. All the details. It's all right there. It's like Robert Ludlum. I don't know what that means. Aoife. She's definitely alive. So, um, yeah, we're going to finish up with um, two tunes. The first is a jig that I learned from the playing of the great box player that we lost not too long ago, Tony McMahon. Um, yeah, he's, he, was, he was pretty special. We've lost a few. We've, we lost Paddy Maloney as well, um, Tony Mack. And it's, uh, it's, it, I think it was harder after COVID to say goodbye to them because we, we just felt like we were kind of cheated of the last two years, so it's it's nice to remember them. And then I'm going to play a tune called Paddy Taylor's. Um, and after that, we're going to ask Robert Kearns to come up and uh, sing us off into the night. <laughs> 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 Rob will be up to say a few words, but um, I want to say thank you so much for coming out tonight because it's one thing to sit here and play. It's another thing to have an audience. And uh, thank you so much for making the effort to come out. I want to say thank you so much to Eric for the sound. It's a cracking job. Thanks a million. For everybody at Canada, Ireland, Canada, Ireland, I, I, I was about to call it Ireland Park, but that's the wrong name now. The Canada Ireland Foundation. I just can't thank you enough for getting me over here. It's been a, it's been a true honour, and especially to be here when everyone's back together again. So thank you so much, William. Thank you so much, Robert. Thank you so much, everyone who works so hard for that foundation during the year. And thank you, Tom Power, yeah. for sitting up here and playing with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been fantastic. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we'll finish it off, and then Robert will come up and have a few words. Thanks to William. Thanks to William P. for putting this up, for bringing us all together, too. Did you do it? William and oh, for God's sake, what's wrong with me? I mean, if I didn't thank William, his mom would give out to me. <laughs> she, she, she practically raised me.
Robert Kearns. Thank you so, so much. I don't know how to begin to thank Aoife and Tom. Their performance tonight was mesmerizing. We have been entertained, we've laughed and cried, and we have had an extraordinary ex experience of how the Aoife has mastered the fiddle. I have never in my life heard the fiddle played the way Aoife plays the fiddle. It's absolutely <laughs> amazing. <laughs> we also get an education, and that's what's, and we get entertained further. Their, their sense of humor and uh, Tom's stories about life in Newfoundland and the connections with, uh, with Ireland and his presence here. You're a gift from the rock here, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I had the pleasure of meeting Aoife yesterday, or actually, uh, it's, it's all merging into one now. This was on Wednesday night. And uh, Aoife's passion for music is extraordinary. And uh, she told me that uh, the, the, the doctorate course that she's doing uh, is in Leipzig. There's only one spot, spot available. And you have to, uh, musicians from all over Europe audition for this spot and they selected Aoife. <laughs> so I, I just want to say that I'm shamelessly uh, plum assing them in the hope that they might come back and do a few more numbers <laughs> first. <laughs> but, you know, we're going to hear an awful lot more about Aoife and Ivrian in years to come. And we're fortunate to hear Tom nearly every day of the week. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we just want to say, Aoife, wherever you are out in the Irish diaspora or at home in Ireland or in your studies in Leipzig, the Irish-Canadian diaspora community are cheering you on. <laughs> so thank you again for coming. Thank you for supporting Canada Ireland Foundation. We want to do more events like this when, and you know, as we, as it's possible to do, and uh, we we're just getting going. So thanks so much for coming tonight, and enjoy the music. We don't have any other music to play <laughs> because this is the first time. Not just we've ever performed together, but we've ever played together at all. No, in sessions. We played in sessions last night at Noonan's, and we played in a session 10 years ago in Montreal. But other than that, this is it. Oh, God love you. Thank you very much. I like to set the bar low. We're actually thinking of going professional. <laughs> <laughs> Just thinking about it. Don't get off your day job, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> that was for you, Tom. <laughs> Glad all my uncles showed up. It's pretty nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're a mystic. She calls out. You get it's pensionable. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. That is the most Newfoundland Irish advice I've ever gotten. Think about playing the guitar, but make sure you get a pension out of it. <laughs> Thanks for paying your taxes, everybody. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Um, we actually haven't got anything ready, so we we said we wouldn't have anything ready, and you would have to watch us <laughs> struggle to come up with something. <laughs> so I'll be shouting random keys at Tom for the next few few minutes. So um, if you want to watch somebody sweat, <laughs> I'll watch <laughs> <on> Tom. <laughs> what do you want to do? Reels or jigs or? Uh, build into it, like. Okay. It's getting too old. Okay, sure. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> C F. Yeah. Then we're gonna go into 
speed modal. Okay. And then, and then, okay. I'm gonna play the Lisa Mandarin, which Tom didn't know. <laughs> which is G-ish. G-ish. <laughs> so, C, F, D-ish, G-ish. You heard it here first. <laughs> We'll figure it out, okay. It's too much information. <laughs> the honest answer is I don't know.
Thank you so much. Evening, everybody. For God's sake.